Hello, I'm John Ombler, the Acting Chief Executive of the Canterbury Earthquake Recovery Authority. Today I want to talk about earthquakes and some of the earthquakes we've been having recently and I'm joined by Dr. Kelvin Berryman from GNS. Kelvin, thank you for um, joining us to have a chat about mm. earthquakes, so, your speciality. Yes, well it has been certainly in Christchurch for yes, five years. Yes, so. yes it has. Yes. I remember talking with you five years ago about mm. the same thing. Kelvin, we were talking the other day about um, the Valentine's Day earthquake and you said to me, well, the biggest surprise to you about that earthquake was that it came as a surprise to anybody. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk more about that? Yeah, um, I'd like to. I think on reflection, we've been thinking about our messaging as scientists um, and our science organisations. And I think we've perhaps been uh, bound up in numbers and probabilities and pre apparently precise numbers and uh, mm -hmm and graphs and the like mm. and I think our messaging perhaps could have been simpler mm. um, and indeed in the last few years we've had numbers that essentially mean there was an uh, even chance of having a magnitude 5 uh, somewhere in the aftershock zone yes. every year in Christchurch. Yes. So from our point of view it was really not a surprise, yes. in fact it's a bit of a surprise it's been about three or four years since we've had a, a 5. Yes. But in that time there's been lots of magnitude 4s, plenty of activity out around the end of the Greendale Fault still. So from our point of view, not really a surprise at all. No. And so in 2010 there was a, a, an earthquake at 7, then in 2011 a 6. Since then there's been a great many 6s and 5s uh, and 6s. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in fact, in Valentine's Day uh, the other day, I think, I think I'm right to say that that's the 56th magnitude 5 and above earthquake yeah. in the sequence. Yeah. Now, I think there's been that perception that it's been relatively quiet for three or mm. four years and not, and very understandably, many of the people of Christchurch and the region have been thinking, oh, well, we're actually finished now. Mm. But the aftershock... Uh, the Earth, I think, has got a longer, longer history, a longer, a longer relaxation time yeah. than what we, what we like as people. We want to move on and get over it and things like that. Mm -hmm. So, that's been the, the, the story. I mean, and the 56th magnitude five mm -hmm. probably has, well, certainly caused very little damage, a little yes. bit off shelves, but. Um, if it had have occurred back before some of the rebuild activity was underway with better in-ground infrastructure and the uprated building code, then probably an earthquake like that would have caused some damage. Mm. Now, you often talk about this thing called a decay curve mm -hmm. after an earthquake, the sort of decays away yes. gradually, but it's not a straight line. There's lots of right. bumpy bits like this. Absolutely. Um, and we could expect more bumpy bits to come. Yeah, I think, I think so. Um, we're... It's, it's uh, not necessarily the message that the people of Christchurch want to hear that earthquakes are going to be part of the wallpaper for quite some time, yeah. but it's, the activity is clearly decreasing, yeah. but, it, b but earthquakes work on the fact that if you have a certain number of small earthquakes, you're going to have one that's a magnitude larger. So yes. just from statistics, then there will be the mm. likelihood or the possibility of, of magnitude fives going forward. And right at the moment, we were saying for the next year, there's about a 50-50 chance yes. of another five. Yes. Exactly where and exactly when, really hard to say. Um, but don't be surprised. But yeah, if we have a 57th magnitude five or above, mm -hmm. it's going to not unlikely to be the event that causes too much damage. Or yes. And, and this, this decay curve, that it, it is gradually getting smaller with mm -hmm. magnitude and there'll be the odd bump. But it will decay away, but you're saying this could go on for a very long time. Yeah, it, if we look, the, the, the sequence of earthquakes in Canterbury has been a little bit unusual globally, mm -hmm. in that often if you have fault lines that produce large earthquakes, but they're relatively frequent, then the aftershocks tend to die away more quickly. Right. With these, uh, like this here, and in fact around Omaru in the 1870s, in Tasmania in the... Uh, I think in the 1890s mm -hmm. and most importantly in the central USA in 1815 and 1860, these sorts of sequences last for a long time. Yeah. They don't last necessarily as big earthquakes but you can detect them on the instruments for a very long time mm -hmm. and I guess I remember visiting with my grandparents in Murchison in the 1960s 
where it was known as the earthquake place of New Zealand in the 1960s, and this is following the Murchison earthquake of 1929 and the Nangahura of 1968. So they tend to be uh, in the background, yeah. and as sort I of say, sort of part of the architecture or the wallpaper of, um, mm. of Christchurch for some time to come. Yeah. So um, go on for a very long time, but with decreasing magnitude with the odd one that's a little bit bigger than yeah, the one. Exactly. Right. There is, you know, the really remote possibility that there's a big one yes. into the future yeah. as well. But again, the, you know, in the early days of thinking about the rebuild and the criteria for the, for the recovery, mm. the chances of these rare large events is actually in the thinking mm. in terms of the engineering design yes. and uh, the in-ground infrastructure and yeah. uh, and so I think that the chances of future large ones are, are in the thinking of, the, of future Christchurch. And probably not too similar from Wanaka where I live when I'm not here, yes. or Wellington where I used to live, or yes, where I many live. other <laughs> where you live, um, or any, many other parts of New Zealand. Yeah, that's right. And, and right at the moment actually up north of Gisborne and say Tolaga Bay, small, very small towns, but they, those guys are experiencing magnitude fives, magnitude fours, uh, very, very frequently. There's a there's a, a patch of activity going on in yeah. the Hikaringi subduction zone right at the moment yeah. in that area. So, yeah, many parts of New Zealand are uh, seismically active. Yes. We're all thinking about Alpine Fault. Fiordlands had big earthquakes in the yes. in the in the century as well. So, yes. uh, yeah, New Zealand is an active place, and uh, but many of our our processes, our engineering is, is all geared mm. to dealing with and coping with those earthquakes. Yes, I know I've got the little geo app thing on my right. phone and yeah, yeah. there seems to be seldom a day goes by without an earthquake somewhere. <laughs> That's exactly right. Yeah. And so coming to, the, to Valentine's Day here, um, it was enough to, to you know, shake people up a little bit, um, but not enough to do uh, much damage of any, uh, to, to any physical infrastructure. Right. Um, but um, as I understand it from everything that's been checked, the under, underground infrastructure, a lot of the new builds, uh, residential and commercial, um, everything stood up pretty well. Yeah, um, that's my understanding, that's everything that I've heard as well and I, I think we do appreciate in fact that it's actually reminded people I guess of the bad old days though, back there in 2011 mm. especially. So I think it's, if you like, done a little bit more psychological damage than, than any um, damage to anything, any of the built environment. Mm. And that's, um, I think, partly because it's been such a long period yes. without yeah. this magnitude five and everybody's thought, ah, oh, mm. you know, maybe we are over mm. and done with these. Mm. Um, so, it, yeah, going back to your point also, that there's many towns uh, around New Zealand that are experiencing earthquakes as frequently as Christchurch. Yes. And indeed, um, there's places in New Zealand like Wellington and uh, in Gisborne and Napier and where in the long term they have higher earthquake risk than does Christchurch, yes. especially with the rebuilt yeah. Christchurch. Right, and people can take heart from a lot of the, the new building standards and the way things have been built here, um, both you know, residential, commercial, but also all of that underground infrastructure. Yeah, the underground infrastructure, which we saw, were reminded just how important yes. those services are. The bits we can't see mm. is how, how important they are to a yeah. city and its uh, livability. So. Very good. Kelvin, thank you for um, sharing some of these thoughts. Are there other things that you think people who are watching this video need to know about what's going on in Christchurch? Uh, I think it's uh, the only thought I would have is that as scientists, we try and get our information out there. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of information available off the web these days. Some of it maybe we are speaking in too much scientific terms for some of the audience some of the time, but we would like to hear if our information is not getting mm -hmm. out there, because from a scientific point of view, informed choices going forward are the, are the key. You know, mm -hmm. knowledge, is, knowledge is power, mm -hmm. um, and if there's some scientific information that people want, to um, so that they can make informed decisions, mm. then we'd really like to hear from people mm. and we really like to hear how we could gear our information better yeah. so that's useful to people, to Sarah, to people such as yourself, to the City Council, but also to the general public. Yeah. So well, I'm sure just, just having this chat today and people are watching this on our website, um, it's, it's very useful to us, just to get the context of mm -hmm. how this recent 
burst of activity right. fits into the overall fits picture. Into the overall. Yeah. yeah, in the overall, I think it's, yeah, in summary, you know, for us, it really wasn't a surprise. It's not really a surprise that the people have become, have been, well, hopefully briefly rather unsettled by this. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think to gain, take confidence from the fact that the rebuild is progressing such that these events are not causing any damage. Fantastic. Thank you very much for joining me, Kelvin. And uh, the, the subject that I've just been talking about will be uh, included as part of the future Christchurch update, which will be in your mailbox soon.